Welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast with Jacob Ayers, providing actionable content to help you along your journey to financial freedom through real estate investing. As the premier asset class, real estate has helped ordinary people just like you amass fortunes. The benefits of passive income from real estate investing will allow you to live a life you want. And now your host, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and apartment deal syndicator, Jacob Ayers. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, episode 127. I'm your host, Jacob Ayers. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I think you're really going to enjoy this guest. Now, every guest resonates differently with different people, and today, I really connected with our guest, John Matheson. But first, before we jump into that, I want to ask you, the audience member, to go over and leave a rating and review if you haven't yet. When you get the chance, I know you're busy, go over, leave a rating and review, and if you'd like, let me know when you do. I'd love to send you a gift for doing so. Well, today's guest is John Matheson. John is a commercial real estate developer with over 26 years of experience, having been involved in projects totaling over $50 million. But John has a different down-to-earth perspective to him. John refers to himself as just another 20-year-old real estate investor with 30 years of experience, and with that much experience comes bigger numbers and bigger deals. So he really is very relatable. So I think you're really going to enjoy him. John is the CEO of Commercial Loan Success, a software and educational platform designed to help small business owners and property investors like you and I make more informed financing decisions. Using the Commercial Loan Success loan analysis software platform, commercial borrowers and commercial lenders like you and I are able to communicate more effectively and we are able to approach lenders more confidently already knowing that our transactions are lendable. So today we're gonna jump into all things commercial loans. John has a ton of experience personally in this arena, so I'm really excited to talk to him. Without further ado, let's jump into the episode. All right, today I welcome on the show, John Matheson. John, hey, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you very much for having me on. Hey, well, it's our pleasure. Well, today, John, we're going to be talking about all things commercial loans. You have a ton of experience in this arena. But first, before we jump into that, can you tell the audience members a little bit about yourself, your background, how you got started in this industry, and just kind of uh, introduce yourself? Sure, sure. So I, um, it's funny because I'm probably, I, I'm, I'm exactly one of you guys. I'm probably just a little older now. <laughs> you know, okay. It's, we all, believe it or not, all us guys in our 50s started in our 20s. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's all it's all part of it. My wife is the funniest with this. When you talk about what I do, you know, we all want to have a nice, crisp, clean elevator script in our business. And um, when you're when you're a real estate developer and a commercial real estate developer and property investor like I am and like a lot of people listening, it's fairly easy for us to say, you know, what we do. But then when you start to get into more stuff and you become a real estate developer and a software developer, what do you say? I mean, that becomes a really long, you know, convoluted elevator script. So my wife will just say to people, oh, he's a real estate developer and a software developer. So he's out of my hair all day. (laughs) (laughs) Most importantly. (laughs) That's that's how it is. So um, for me, just to give a, a level of context, just to frame today's discussion, because as we go along today, we'll get from real estate and then how to use leverage and how to use software to be able to help you get leverage. I'll just frame it in, in a context so that the audience has just an idea about me. I've been investing in real estate and property for now over 30 years. So I've survived through three recessions in my career. Um, I just as soon not come on your show and talk about how to survive recessions because we're in the middle of another one, let's say. So let's hope <laughs> it continues and we all get to continue the, the market that we're in. But, you know, along the way, the numbers get high when you've been doing it for 30 years. Um, I probably 
completed over 50 million in transactions as a principal or a professional. And that doesn't include what I'm currently involved in, which is probably that much again. So you just, you just get into a lot of big stuff from where you start, but you know, it won't surprise you or anybody in the audience when you're doing transactions over a lifetime of a career that you do arrange for yourself many millions of dollars of, of commercial bank financing or, and private money financing along the way either. But, you know, after listening to you, I figure you're going to want to know. And so will your audience, well, how did, how did you get to this place in your career? How did you become a real estate developer with a software app? Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a curious topic. Many people are probably sitting wondering right this moment. You know, I started, I started right around your age. I was late twenties. I have a background in real estate sales up until that point, but I had a specific goal. I always wanted to, to be the real estate developer. And as a, as in the entrepreneur side of me as a kid, when you just, you know, it's not like I didn't have money that I came from. My parents did well for what they did. And um, they had, you know, it was awesome, all the stuff that they did for me as a kid. And that's how I came along. I couldn't have been luckier with, um, with who I had for parents and how I was brought up. But it wasn't like they had hundreds of thousands of dollars to give me to start a business. I had to raise that money on my own to get started. And one of the burning desires I always had was I wanted to be able to sign my own paycheck for myself. I wanted to pay myself what I was worth. And it was my drive to get into business was to be able to say, Hey, you know, if I don't make the money this week, I don't get paid. But if I do, I get to pull whatever I want. <laughs> so, so it's where you start. But my goal was specific. I wanted to, I didn't want to just own some investment property. I wanted to actually be the developer. So to do that, I knew I had to learn the business inside and out. And I need to learn how to get financing, both institutional and private. And like anything, you just, you learn by doing. And my first transaction as a principal was small. And it's like many of you who've started there too. It was, it was on a building lot for $30,000 on which we were able to put a new house that we sold for 225. And it was great. Uh, and what was interesting about it is back then, this is back you know, back a long time ago now, but we were able to get money from a commercial bank at prime plus two interest to be able to build the home. And these small transactions are fantastic. They form the foundation for your business. They can be the stepping stone to increase your portfolio over time. And to advance to the next level and to get into the larger properties, which is something most of us in this business are always going to aspire to, you do need to level up into legitimate commercial financing space as well. So when I sold that house, I went and bought some more lots and I kept moving and I kept going back down to the bank and saying, Hey, my little business model works. Let's do another. And as you build relationships in those spaces, they will work with you to keep things moving, which is really great. But what always frustrated me and from when I started all the way up to even a few years ago was the unpredictability of the debt side of the business, the commercial bank process. It, it always seemed like the bank process was kept a mystery. And I'm sure we could all learn ratios and formulas and the like, but you never really knew if they were gonna do the transaction the way that you needed it as they got bigger. And let's face it, if you can work with a commercial bank lender, they are the source of the best rate and terms that you can get out there, especially when compared to the expense of all private capital or online lenders on a transaction. But when you really can't afford to be out the due diligence time, money, deposits, and you know you find out your regulated banker in the middle of the stream can't do the deal or that you need to put more money in to make it work, it's never a good day. And if any of you have done this long enough or have any experience with what I'm talking about, you know the absolute pain that, that was, that's in that process. So you know, how do we solve that so that we can all grow and properly leverage our business? You know, we... We all learn and, you know, if you're a Ramsey guy, you hear, you, you learn, well, that's a bad thing. And on your personal ledger, there's, that's really a good point and true. And I do subscribe to that. But when you get to the business side of the ledger, you realize that when you can take bank money in the single digits and, and get yourself involved in cash flowing properties and be able to do one and another and another, you can start to build yourself a heck of a portfolio. And then all of a sudden, guys, I'll tell you, you turn out to be 54 and stuff's paid off. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, somehow that 20 year table, that, that 20 year term that seems so bad way back when it's, it's, it's over. <laughs> yeah, John, well, so much to dig into there. And first I want to pull out this little nugget you mentioned right off the bat. And it is, you're just another 20 something year old guy with 30 years of experience. And when you've been in the game that long, the numbers get big. So of course you've got all this experience under your belt. And sometimes it's kind of hard for maybe a younger investor to connect with someone like yourself, like, oh, John, you know, he's closed over $50 million in real estate. How can I even connect or relate to this guy? Well, you're just saying all you are is the same person with 20, 30 years of experience. And after that time, those numbers just happen to get that big. So, you know, really inspiring just just for the audience members out there listening, just know that you down this path, 20 or 30 years will be in the same boat John is. So really cool stuff there. Now, John, many people out there kind of, yeah, have that mentality you touched on of, you know, avoiding debt, that Dave Ramsey kind of uh, mantra, if you will. Now, there's obviously some differences in good debt and bad debt. And you kind of touched on that with talking about avoiding debt on your personal ledger, but taking on debt on your business ledger. Can you kind of touch base and dig into that a little bit more and exactly what you mean by that? Sure. So with the, um, with, with, as you start to build yourself up for your commercial developer business or your, your property business, one of the things that you'll, you'll start out with is you do, you do benefit if you have decent personal credit. And if you don't, it's okay because you can fix that. And it doesn't take as long to fix it as you would think. And when you run around with a high credit score on a personal level, um, it is something that the commercial bank will look at. So it's, it's, it's very important to you know, understand on that process. You don't want to be carrying a lot of debt personally, regardless of Ramsey's teaching or not. But when you're doing what we do for business, you want to be as lean as possible on the personal side because you want the commercial bank to be comfortable that the only leverage that you really have is on your business. And leveraging business and assets to grow is just a, it's an age old methodology that people have used to, to grow their businesses since the beginning of time. When we're, all of us in the private sector will use debt financing um, very effectively to grow our business. If we were in the public um, space where we own public companies, what we do, well, we'd issue stock. And of course, you know, nobody's going to buy stock in our companies. <laughs> we're, we're small private businesses. So, but the public businesses get through, you know, they want to do some R&D on a new product. They just issue more stock and then they get funded and off they go. And when you start to think about it in terms of, of your business and your, your leverage and you say, well, if I'm going to buy an asset, what is the cash flow from the asset that I'm going to get? And we'll get into our software in a little while, but that's where the software really helps you because the software shows you whether or not the, the asset you want to buy cash flows enough to cover the debt. And once you realize, hey, I can cash flow and cover debt, and then you are able to acquire properties that you can either manage, that you can rehab and flip, or that you can just hold, once you realize that that's a viable methodology for you to grow your portfolio, time becomes your friend. Because as you're paying, as the, the tenants and the cash flowing side of your property is paying down your mortgage for you, you know, you're actually able to just ride through and gain equity on a daily basis. Now, John, what exactly does the commercial lending environment look like for a real estate investor who's maybe just getting started? You know, I'll give you I'll give you a perfect example of of when I started out, and I was I was younger. I was in my early twenties at this point, but I was in I was in real estate, and I actually was in college and got my real estate license, and decided it was a grand idea to do commission based real estate sales for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> not realizing, you know, it took 60 days or more to close a transaction. And um, you guys will all laugh, but when I started, it was the 80s and interest rates were 10. I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't the environment that we were in today. And, you know, we were we had to deal with all sorts of different products to try to get somebody a 7% mortgage rate to be able to get into a home. And commercial was no different. It was they were higher rates. But one of the um, things I learned about banking, and this is, a, this is a great mentality story for anybody listening, is you're deciding to work with the commercial bank because 
every we, what we found with commercial and success software when we started to to dive into the market for what's there the feeling for just about everybody in the space from your 20s all the way past my age into your 60s is the commercial bank process is first and foremost a mystery and second it's 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 at best nervous experience to at worst dread <laughs> or, or for going into the process and so your mentality is key in how you approach it so i'm a kid and i'm doing my first commercial transaction and i have no idea what i'm doing i probably didn't even belong in the room and i had um i had a mentor office manager um, she was just a wonderful lady. To me at the time, being 21, she was probably my age now, and she seemed old to me, which is funny now. But she, she was just one of those strong-willed maternal office figures. She, she had this powerful voice that you could you literally hear through walls. And I was in one of those office buildings with a little cubicle set up, and you had the conference room next door, and you know you thought you had privacy in the conference room, but it seemed like she could hear everything through those walls, no matter what it was. And if she... <laughs> had an opinion, you know, of what you were doing, she let you know. And, you know, you didn't argue with her. She was the one that was right. And you, you know, you learned. When one of my early transactions, it was a commercial, small little commercial building. I think it was around 350000 The buyer, I remember, had reasonable credit and experience, but he only had part of the down payment to complete the transaction. And the rest was coming from a family member but the family member was not willing to sign on the loan. So sound familiar? This is all normal stuff, right? Even back 35 years ago, this is what went on in business. So I remember the, the people in the office saying, oh, you have to bring in this commercial banker. Everyone said he was great. And if, he, if Steve can't do the deal, no one could. And Steve worked for a bank now that you would recognize the name. The bank's still in existence and as big as ever. And so in comes Steve and he sits in the conference room with my buyer and it was a Thursday afternoon and I'll explain to you in a minute why that was, why that's relevant. So after a half hour or so discussion and assessing the transaction, Steve says something like the numbers work, but the transaction and the transaction makes sense, but the down payment is not seasoned. So your aunt needs to co-sign the loan or it can't be done. Right? So there the buyer and I sit. And I don't know what to say, Jacob. I'm just like lost. I'm like, okay. And, and you know, the buyer's got this unhappy look on his face. I can still remember it. And before the buyer, I could even speak and plead a case. There it was. It was this, this thunderous voice through the wall um, from that one that could somehow hear every word through walls. And all, <laughs> all the voice said, Jacob, was in a very firm voice. It said this, at your bank. And I sat back in the chair. And remember, Steve was supposed to be able to do anything, right? And, the, and I looked at Steve and I said, well, Steve, I think the talking wall has a point. You know, you say it can't be done, but perhaps that's just at your bank. And he fought me tooth and nail. He said, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea how could I insult them, this and that. I said, tell you what, if I get this done before noon tomorrow, Friday night, right? I'm 22 years old. Friday night, you're taking me out for drinks and dinner and I can stay out late. <laughs> so the clock so, starts like ticking. You guys can all imagine what happened. Steve bought till 1 a.m. <laughs> it took me five or six calls even back then. Now, now what's funny, guys, is you know, I come from an era where when my business started, there was no email, there was no cell phone. This is the 80s. I mean, you did everything by hardline phone or handshake business. When you hear stories about signed, sealed, deliver contracts on the white canary and, and, um, and pink copies, that's really what you did. You signed it, you sealed it, and then you delivered it because there was no other way for you to know the other person got it. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't email, you didn't text in offers, you didn't call by cell phone. Business wasn't as efficient then. It took a lot longer to do things. And so I'm on the phone, just on a hard line phone, making phone calls, finding bankers, and actually got the deal done the next day with another banker. So what's the takeaway? You know, you realize that these commercial banks are all going to behave differently on transactions. And just because you get told no at one or no at another one, it's like raising private money guys. Your friend in the process is the word next. 
if you have a good project, if you have something that you can viably demonstrate can cash flow, and you maybe lack experience or you lack something else in the process, the commercial, some commercial banks, yes, are going to tell you no, but some aren't. And you just have to keep moving. You have to keep moving through the process till you get funded the way that you want to, you want to get funded. So, you know, when I sit here now with the commercial loan success tool, which we might as well get into, this is how we make that type of the process and connecting with the commercial bank easier. Because this is something that, you know, we just know is happening to everybody out there either, you know, starting out or trying to do their second or third or fourth transaction is you get to a point where you say, well, is the bank going to fund me? Yeah, so kind of some takeaways up to this point. You know, there are some unknowns in the commercial lending world, whether that's, you know, what do the metrics look like? What are the requirements? What is the bank looking for? It kind of varies from lender to lender. So you're going into this debt request oftentimes somewhat blind or, you know, un, unbeknownst to what they're looking for. So you have actually developed this commercial loan success software that kind of helps uh, the borrower underwrite deals and prepare for this loan. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, we mentioned we're going to jump into it. Tell us exactly what this tool does and what it is. Yeah, sure. So when you get into the world of commercial lending space and, and there's basically two types of loans that happen um, just to really make it from a 40,000 foot view over the top of the business of banking. There's the unsecured lending space, which is on business credit lines, credit cards, and that stuff. And then there's the collateralized space, which is often the commercial mortgage against property. And the underwriting on property, guys, is actually fairly simple. There's a book out called Commercial Mortgages 101. Michael Reinhardt wrote it. It's been out for five or six years now. And he did a great job of breaking down in it what banks do to underwrite loans. And essentially, so that, you know, the mystery of the metrics are fairly, it, it, it can be broken down like this. You need basically three things to provide to a commercial bank for them to actually underwrite your cash flow property. The first one is your net operating income, your income minus expenses. We all understand that. Your next one is either a capitalized rate or an appraised value, which gets assigned to the property to determine its valuation. In, in normal banking, they, they obviously need to know what the property is worth. The third is called the debt service coverage ratio. And what that is, is, is where you have the bank looking to cover on cash flow, the mortgage payments in, in a nutshell. So when I was out looking for property, the backstory on commercial loan success, a property loan back on the, after the last recession. Um, and I was having a hard time. I, I, I had a, a, a piece of land that was on pro forma for construction. And my bank um, that I was with at the time wanted me to find a new lender because they were getting purchased. So I had to move the loan. And I'm out trying to find somebody to do the transaction. And I, was having, I couldn't find anybody. And I'm like, I'm not going to just sit here at this level of, of my career and how hard I've worked to build my own credit and what I have and start Googling for a lender. This is crazy. So I'm not going to go online and put my social security number and put in my, my, my financials and just hope for the best. I've got to find a solution here. So I got referred to a commercial banker, um, just a guy who was a powerhouse in the Northeast in the business. And he, a couple of people said, no, you got to go to Dan. Dan will get this done for you. So I meet Dan and Dan's future. Dan is my partner in commercial loan success. But I meet Dan and Dan says to me, bring your, your pro, pro proposed income and expenses to the, to the meeting. So I bring it in and we're sitting down. He's got his laptop and we're in a diner. And the two of us shouldn't be in a diner at our age eating the diner food. You guys can all do that at your age. But, you know, when you, you're <laughs> our age, you shouldn't be in diner food the way you are. But we are. And he's got the laptop open and I'm giving him my income and expense. And he's tapping away. And he's only tapping for like five minutes. And he comes back to me and says, okay, you're a go. And, and you're like, how did that and I happen? Say, yeah, yeah, guys, I'm sitting here going, what do you mean I'm a go? And he goes, yeah, I've put your numbers, your income and expenses, your net operating income numbers into my software. And what my software does is it vets your transaction numbers against common commercial bank guidelines. And it determines whether you are likely a stop or a go to a commercial loan request. And I'm looking at him 
And, you know, as acute as my need was to get that loan done, I'm starting to change my perception over what's on his computer because I'd never seen such a thing. So I said to him, what do you mean your software? He goes, yeah, it's my program. I wrote it. I've been using it in my consultancy for over 30 years. It's been responsible for the vetting and, and placing of over, over a few billion dollars worth of commercial bank loans and, and business credit. And I'm looking at him going, it's, you wrote the code. He goes, yeah. And I said, well, I'd like to get a copy of that for, I'd like to get that for my computer. And he goes, well, you can't. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, you can't have it. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is proprietary. Yeah. And I said, do you realize the angst that I was under coming in here today and the problem that you've solved this quickly, you've made me feel empowered that I can now, you know, go into a bank and say, I'm, I'm, I'm a go for this loan. I said you, and he goes, yeah, it happens all the time. Because I, I, people all, all over the place say, who I, who I service and help do this is how they feel. And I'm looking at him going, well, have you ever thought about, you know, getting this off of your computer and into the cloud? And he says, oh, yeah, definitely. I thought about it. And he goes, I just, you know, haven't done it. I've been busy in my consultancy and, you know, I haven't gotten to it. And I, I'm looking at him and I said, well, would you like a partner in this and to get make it happen? He said, sure. You know, and so that's where we started. And from there, what's happened is we have had, you know, with Dan, Dan is a commercial banker and a bank consultant by trade. And he's been at it, as I said, for over, you know, 30 years. He's used the software to analyze the billions of dollars of transactions that he's done. And he's so passionate about getting it into the hands of everybody who's doing commercial property transactions or seeking a business loan. He's just one of the most heartfelt business people I've ever met. And he's genuinely committed to people he serves in achieving their goals and financial security. So when you get to commercial and success, they round it back five minutes ago where you said, well, tell me about the software. You know, now you know who started it and now you know what it did for me. So you say, all right, well, what can it do for everybody else? And basically what it does is it allows anybody on the call here today to take any commercial transaction, be it an apartment property, a commercial property, a mixed use property, or even just a regular business loan that you want to get, put in your numbers into the software. It takes two to five minutes to enter your numbers and you hit run analysis and the software tells you if you're likely a stop or a go to a commercial bank application. And what's happening with our users now is people are getting empowered and they, the result of the software is one piece of paper. We call it the CLS one sheet. And the one sheet's written by Dan in banker language. And what happens with the one sheet is you download, print, and share it with your banker as a conversation starter for your transaction. And, you know, I can feel you starting to bounce in your chair right? Because think about how you go to get bank loans today, right? You do everything I used to do. You write a, a business plan. You attach your pro formas. You attach operating income from the property if it's existing. And then you give it to the bank. And what happens? You wait, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. Am I right? So you wait and you say, are they going to do this? What are they going to do? Are they going to do what I asked? Are they going to give me the right in terms I need? Are, you know, and, and then they come back to you. And if you have a relationship, most likely they are, but they can dial in and change things because things change on their end. So you're sitting there going, what's the likelihood that I can get funded? And you, as you know, being in, in the business we're in, we all of a sudden, the day we sign a purchase and sale, our due diligence money and clock starts. And it's like the last thing we need to know is we can't get funding on this deal. So when you're able to download, print, and share a one sheet of paper with your banker, it starts the conversation differently than we ever have. And it empowers you to walk in and say, hey, I'm a go. Take a look at this. Is this a transaction that you'd like to continue the conversation with me on? And what we get for feedback from the bankers is amazing because the bankers say, wow, you know, everybody says we're not lending, but that's not true. One of the biggest problems is that we have is we have borrowers who come in that are unprepared or who have improper expectations of what we can do. I mean, a commercial bank normally can't do a 90% loan to value loan. 
<laughs> Unfortunately. Like them too. Right. But so, you know, but they, so people go in with it. So this one sheet of paper coming in, the banker looks at it and goes, okay, this is a deal I can do. Let's meet. And they feel like it saves them a bunch of time and due diligence, reading the business plan and getting to know the deal and getting to know you. No, they, they see it in one piece of paper up front. Now, if you have other things that are in the file that you feel are potentially an issue for you, the banker's looking at the most important set of metrics first in commercial lending, in property lending, they're looking at the transaction. And now they're saying, okay, if you have some issues on your end, how can we help you fix them versus just outright, no, we're not going to do the deal. The mentorship side starts to take over, especially at the community bank level, where they will start to help you because they want to do the transaction because they want to lend on good cash flowing property transactions. And they're actually ecstatic for you to connect with them that way compared to the way that we all used to, which is, you know, a phone call and a business plan. And can you read it for me? Yeah, I really love this. Now, what exactly does this software do to empower the borrower, John? Does it, you know, allow them to go to multiple lenders and, you know, get a quick yes or no from multiple different lenders? Does it allow them to, you know, kind of have a better idea of what they should expect going into the deal? How, how exactly does it benefit the, the borrower? Sure. So picture yourself and, and you're, you're going through and an, you input your net operating income numbers and you hit run analysis and the software says you're a go and your debt service coverage ratio with all of your bank carve outs already embedded in are set, telling the banker it's a good transaction, right? Picture yourself starting out or somebody that's, you know, into the business even for a while, how you feel now when you're calling the bank. These aren't your numbers. These are third-party software numbers written by a commercial banker to tell them that it's a, the transaction should be deemed a go. So when our users, the testimonials we got, I'll give you a perfect example. One, one, one guy, he's doing a, a three-family, and he goes into the uh, banker, and he's got the one sheet. And he sits down, he puts the one sheet on the desk and he says, what we recommend you say, which is just, you know, to the banker, okay, I'm, this is what I do. I'm a property investor. I've got this transaction. I've, I've purchased software that helps me vet the deal. And it says that according to commercial bank guidelines, I'm a go. Would you like to continue the conversation with me? And the banker looks at it, the vice president of the bank. And he says, where'd you get this? <laughs> and he says, well, oh, I bought this on, I bought this online. The banker says, excuse me for a moment, goes into the back and they're in one of those banks that has the corporate offices in back, brings out the senior vice president. Senior vice president sits down, shakes the young guy's hand and says, hey, this is fantastic stuff. Here was one of the most prepared borrowers we've seen. And the kid says to us, I'm starting to feel pretty good now. You know, I've got the VP, I've got the senior vice president. Now they're now they want my business and they're worried I'm going to go out the door and do what you just said. I'm going to go shop at another bank. Right. Now they want his business. See, we've changed the conversation to one of empowerment for the borrower instead of trepidation for the borrower right at the onset. So, yes, can you download print and share with several other banks? Of course you can. If you wanted to, it, we're at the point now where the bankers are receiving this so well, we're creating a digital platform for you to be able to connect, which should be available in the fall, where you can now connect your one sheet digitally to a banker. And it'll go right into the banker and the banker will accept or pass on your connection request that you're asking to meet them on the transaction, depending upon what they're doing for lending in that space at that time. Yeah, sure. Okay. So does this commercial loan success software tool, what does it do to take the mystery out for the borrower still? Remember we talked earlier in the show about there's still a lot of mystery of what banks are looking for. Does it, you know, tell the borrower, hey, you know, you're lacking in this area or this needs to be improved upon? Does it kind of give you, you know, if you do get that stop result, are there, are there uh, you know, I guess suggestions to go back and, you know, improve your application? Absolutely. Yeah. That's one of the nice things that we like about it is, you know, all of us want to save time and money in business too. And none of us like to be embarrassed or told no. And we certainly don't want to be rejected at a bank down the road to find out. We might as well find out up front what our issues are and look to fix them. 
most entrepreneurs can always handle a problem if they know what it is. And so if you, if the software says, Hey, based on the numbers you put in, you need to get more rent. You're short 180,000 in income or 18,000 in, in income, or you need to cut expenses on the property by you know, 41,000 to get the number. It'll tell you exactly what it is that's holding you back from the loan amount that you're requesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's really empowering now. Now that you're getting to understand where where your problems are, like you said, an entrepreneur can fix their problems if they only know what they are. So that's really powerful in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're having a ball with this, and you know, our um, our our feeling on it when you start to look at who's who's out there. I mean, you've got 17 million businesses in this country on survey that report they use some type of commercial bank credit there's three to 7 million property investors like us out there, depending upon the number that you, you hear that are either active or want to be active. And you know, the basic tenement we talked about at the beginning of the show, in order to grow, you do need leverage. I'm sure this is a big topic for you anywhere you go is, you know, how do I raise the money to get started or how do I, how do I do this? So be it, but let's say I'm starting out. I can use the software to demonstrate to a private lender why my transaction is deemed to go. And just about every private lender I know would tell you of any sophistication would tell you this. If it's a good deal for the bank, it's a great deal for me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're raising money on the equity side as well, right? Yeah, because in, in, in the software, you fit in the equity piece. So for, for you as a syndicator, and this is the way I use it, I can, sh- I can demonstrate how my debt fits in, at what rate, at what amortization, what term. And then I can show how my private lender fits in and how I'm paying them, if I'm paying interest, if I'm accruing, if they have a position. And you know, one of the things that I always wanted to do with my business is I wanted to maintain 100% ownership of what I have, which means to grow, I need to have debt capital. I, I'm not going to share equity in a transaction. I like the level of control over the assets. And if I'm going to take bank money or someone else's money, I had a banker when I was very young say to me, and these words just stuck with me, John, we're not your partner, we're your lender. And that's really a good mentality to have. These are people you're borrowing money and you're going to return it. So you have to accumulate the belief that you can actually pay them back. So when we go into a property and we vet it through commercial loan success and we say, okay, the software tells me this is a decent cash flow deal. Let me do some what if scenarios. What happens if I lose a few rents, right? So let me see what happens. And I take out a few rents. What happens if I, if I up the rents by a hundred dollars next year, you know, how can I change the number? What if I want to do a cash out refi in two years to take out my private lender? How much do I have to raise rents on what they are currently to do that? And you can use this tool to absolutely run the lender financing debt management side of your business year after year. And it allows you to scale in a way that wasn't available to me when I was your age. It just, everything I had to do was on Excel or it was just, you know, on a yellow pad. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So this, this tool really gives you a whole picture approach of your deal as a whole on both the debt, the equity, and the life cycle of the project. It does. And, you know, there's all the geeky stuff in there that we love as real estate developers. <laughs> you know, there's the, we have different screeners, we call them, for each property. So it's the apartment that makes use of the commercial screeners. If you want a business credit line to be able to pave your parking lot and don't want to put the debt on your, on your project, then you can use that screener. But it gives you cash on cash returns. It gives you economic efficiencies. It, it gives you all the stuff that you like about a, um, a commercial real estate type of software. But it's not meant to be the heavy lift that some of the legacy softwares in the market are. It's meant to answer for us you know, on our mobile device, if we want, right in front of a property. Okay, the seller's asking this. Here's what the income and expenses are. Is the mortgage financeable? And if it is, how much private money or my own money do I need? And am I going to be able to demonstrate that? And when you download, print, and share a one sheet with a private lender and show them how it fits in, it changes the entire discussion over the way we all usually did do it or do it. Yeah, I love it. And I think one thing I'm, I'm uh, kind of 
looking here towards is this would really help a newer real estate investor look professional and really look like they know a lot more than they maybe in fact do in, in preparation for that commercial lender. It, it really is. And you know, how many of us start out and have to go to family and friends or somewhere to get our first amount of money to get going and to be able to actually show at the kitchen table, Hey, listen, I can pay you back. The software has shown me a way that I can do this. And yeah, it absolutely. adds a whole, you know, it's a whole new. And so, you know, whether you're doing your first flip, whether you're doing your first multifamily unit, wherever you're starting. And then if you adopt the mentality of, Hey, I've got this tool. Let me keep growing. So let me do a two family to a four family to an eight to a 16 to a 32. And you just keep getting bigger. All of a sudden you turn back around and you're my age and you know. <laughs> yeah. So this tool isn't really just for the John Mathesons of the world, the, the big scale developers. It does have applicability to maybe that newer investor trying to buy that fourplex or that 10 unit building or whatever it may be. And, and Jacob, everybody's problems the same. It doesn't matter if I sit in the developer council in Boston today, right? I can sit with some of the biggest players in the planet, or I can sit with the kids that I mentor coming through in the business. The same either nervous to dread of the commercial bank process exists. <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> you know, and so now let's turn the tables and the bankers want us to. The bankers are happy with this. And let's go into the bank empowered with a one sheet and we either digitally connect or we walk in and we say, would you like to continue a conversation with me on this property? And wait till you see what happens. And, and whether you're, what doesn't, and if, and if you're starting out, maybe you have to do that with the private lender because the bank says, well, you just don't have enough experience yet. All right. So you find the private lenders and you put them together and you demonstrate to them how this asset can cash flow and pay them. And you've started, there you go. But you now have a tool to use that you didn't have. And, you know, let's get into the pricing of this, Jacob, because people are sitting here now going, oh my God, what does this cost? And, you know, the bankers sit there and, and some of them have said, well, you're going to charge 1500 for this, right? I mean, this is a, you know, a, a heck of a software that solves a lot of problems in a transaction for people. And Dan and I were adamant about that, especially Dan wanting to make it so that it was something that everybody could get. So when we launched and, and we've been out there, you know, in the, in the public domain now for the last few months with our launch, and when we did it, we priced it at $147 per screener. That's it. So for $147, you can vet any transaction that you want. You have it for an annual subscription. You use it. You get a dashboard. Inside is a resource center to help guide you through the software. I'm in the resource center talking about different ways to do real estate transactions with it. Dan's in there talking about banking dynamics and things that you can do to increase your chances with the bank. There's all sorts of video tutorials along the way in the software. Our tool tips, every step of the way to help you. This is designed for a tool to be, to just get into anybody's hands. And like I say to, you know, anyone who asks me about it, you know, Jacob, who wouldn't want to know if their numbers qualify before they apply? Oh, I can't imagine anybody doesn't. <laughs> right, right. So you can imagine why, you know, this thing, it's, you know, it's, it's digital, it's software, it, it hits the ground and it takes off because that's the problem it solves. We're now able to talk to the private lender or the commercial banker with confidence that our numbers work. And back to my original story, if the banker says no, what are we all going to do? Next, I'm going to the next bank because my numbers work. I'm, you know, I'm like inoculated here from a no. I, I'll get this loan. <laughs> I love it. That's a great attitude. And this tool gives you that confidence to be able to go into that situation knowing so. Couldn't have said it better myself. Right. And that's why I'm so excited about it. And, you know, people say to me things like, well, you're a real estate developer. Why are you into software? Well, you know, it's exciting with the things that you can do to change people's approach. And it's fun to start to change the conversation between borrowers and lenders. And this is a problem you found yourself, John, early on, you know, you found, you know, having trouble going into these commercial lenders, not knowing, you know, the answer. So you 
found your own problem. You've came up with a solution and it just so happens other people share that problem with you. So yeah, great stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as we're wrapping up here, John, we've got a, we've got a lightning round. It's just a series of questions. We ask every one of our guests, are you up for it? I'm up for it. Let's do it. All right, cool. Well, our very first question was, what was your biggest hurdle getting started investing in real estate and what did you do to overcome it? Boy, you know, I think that when you start out, your mindset is just so important. And, you know, I knew that I had to keep moving. And, and, and so when you're sitting there, you're always going to doubt yourself. Can I do this? Am I able to do it? And, you know, you, you'll, you'll have negativity along the way. And one of the things I realized at a young age is you just have to keep moving. No matter what, you just have to keep moving. So you get told no next. You get, you know, if you're looking in for private capital, you have to be able to, when someone says no, you have to be able to say, hey, do you know anybody who you might think this might be a good opportunity for? I mean, you just have to keep moving and, and, and never stop until you get your transactions completed and funded so that you can grow to the, to the place that you want to be. Yeah, I love it. Well, John, do you have a personal habit that contributes to your success? Boy, I probably just gave it away, right? Uh, <laughs> Possibly you know, so. I, I'm stubborn. You know, I'll just keep moving. I, I'll get, I, you know, I'm a big planner. So, I'll, you know, you think you, you fail to plan, you, you, you plan to fail, right? So I'll, I'll always plan and I'll sit there and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do with the development. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, or, or an asset. I'm going to pay it off, keep it do this, do that. So now once I have my plan, now I'm relentless to get to it. So I'm always going to take hits along the way. You know, it's like a baseball pitcher. You, no matter how good you are in the Hall of Fame, they all gave up a bunch of runs. Sure, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, you're going to give up home runs against you. Things are going to happen, but you've just got to be tenacious enough to keep moving. I love it. Well, John, do you have an online resource you find valuable? Obviously, all episode we've been talking about the commercial loan success software. So aside from that, is there anything else? Um, you know, when you, as you get into your business, the, the new stuff that is available today, and I say it's newer, but you, you guys will all laugh at me. But, you know, I come from here. Remember, when I started, we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the new online planning tools are great. Things like Slack and Asana and those things. If you, when you're in real estate, if you get a project management tour, um, tool to keep your team organized is really important. And we use those and I love those tools. Yeah, yeah. Slack, another really powerful one, really popular. So we'll link that in the show notes for our audience uh, wants to check it out, never heard of it or played with it. Really, really cool organization stuff there. So, well, John, what book would you recommend to the listeners and why? You know, we're on a, um, we're on a real estate dominated podcast, right? So one of the things that, you know, a, a, it's a little bit newer book that I picked up that I, I wish I had younger and it talks about negotiating, you know, and one, one of the things now we actually use when we're, when we're buying properties is we'll use the software to show the seller how we can't get enough leverage against the property to buy it for the price they want. <laughs> Right. Or, or if we're going to refinance, we argue with the bank saying, you know, we should be able to get this amount or if we're selling, we know what a buyer, buyer can get for a, you know, a loan against our property. So one of the books that's out there now is called Never Split the Difference by Chris Boss. And it's a book about negotiating. And um, he was a former FBI agent. He was a hostage negotiator. <laughs> And he talks, he teaches you ways to negotiate, which um, in, in the way he puts it in the stories that he tells is fantastic. And let's face it, we're all negotiating as a buyer or a seller. You know, we could be either one at any time. We buy something, we learn that skill, and then we're going to sell it. We have to learn that skill. And he kind of shows you both sides of a negotiation. And um, I found the book fascinating and it's now on my desk. Yeah, absolutely. I recently read that book by Chris Voss, a former FBI hostage negotiator, and he has some really cool, unique tips that you can implement in your in your own negotiation every day. One of those one real fun ones to practice for me was the art of mirroring, where you repeat the last few words somebody said and to entice them to kind of speak more and, and impart some more information on you. So yeah, really cool book. I'd recommend anybody pick it up if they haven't. We'll link that book in the show notes for audience members to find. 
Now, John, last question here. If you were to give advice to your 20-year-old self to get started investing in real estate, what would that be? Wow, that's, that's a good one. So I could dial myself back here a little ways. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, this may not be exactly the answer that you would be looking for. But as you, you know, I'm at the point now where my kids are grown. And I had my business from my late 20s right through now. And um, I would say to myself, spend more time with your family. Because your real estate investing business can take every minute of your day if you let it. And you just will miss a lot of stuff in your 30s and 40s, especially when you're, if you have kids and they're growing up, you want to, I would be telling myself, it's okay to miss some of it. You, the deals will still be there. Yeah, I love it. That's really powerful. And it's kind of hard. One of those hard things to see when you're in the weeds, when you're in your 20s, 30s, really hustling. So really a uh, parting wisdom there. John, it's been a really fun conversation. Lots of new stuff here. You know, the world of commercial lending can seem kind of scary at best. And, you know, how did you put it? Was it a uh, how did you put the world of commercial lending so eloquently? It's 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 for all of us in property development or investor space, right? It's either at best a little nervous to at worst pure dread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, going back to what I was saying, yeah, it's been such a great conversation. You've really given us a lot of information and this awesome new tool and resource to use in our in our underwriting and, you know, going out and acquiring new debt to grow your portfolio and ultimately achieve financial freedom, which is what we're all about here on the show. So, as we're wrapping up here, is there any parting piece of advice or guidance you'd like to leave with the audience members? Sure. Hey, listen, you know, when I, I just, the, the empowerment that's happening with our users, when you know before you apply is, um, is just something that everybody should check out. You know, our, um, they can find us at our website at www.commercialloansuccess.com. Real simple, commercialloansuccess.com. And for, um, for you, for today, for everybody who's taken the time to, to listen to us, we, um, we always like to have a free giveaway for, for the shows. And we do it at a lead page address at web.commercialloansuccess.com. And in your case, because of the podcast, it would be forward slash Jacob. So it's web.commercialloansuccess.com forward slash Jacob. And what's there is we've got a book coming out in August called Commercial Loan Success. And it's really a, a guide to lender financing today. And we give away chapter two, which is one of our biggest, neediest chapters, where it tells you all the things that we think is a good idea for you to do before you ever speak to a commercial lender. And it's really a checklist guide to get through so that you can be prepared for the process first. And then it gives you a nice link to our software at a discount if you want to be able to check that out. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for that, John. That's web.commercialloansuccess.com forward slash Jacob. Go there where you can get chapter two of the upcoming commercial loan success book, along with the discount for the commercial loan success tool. John, thanks so much. It's been a great conversation today. We look forward to having you back on in the future for another conversation and to talk some more about commercial lending. Oh, fantastic. I'd love to do it. All right. Well, John, thank you so much. Take care. wraps up our episode today with John Matheson. For more information and to find those resources we mentioned in the show, you can find those in the show notes, including the commercial loan success software. And also don't forget about that free gift John gave us at web.commercialloansuccess.com forward slash Jacob for a free chapter in John's upcoming book. All of those links are in the show notes, so you can find those there. Well, hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Let me know what you think. Go out and leave a rating and review on whichever platform you're listening on. For more information, resources, and to connect with me, you can visit www.jacobairs.com. Till next week, go out there and engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. 
All investment strategies have a potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom LLC exclusively.